want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening. I'm Siwa <clears throat> Billy Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. We have with us today from the Black Berets Por La Justicia, right? Enrique Dominguez. Yes. Welcome, Henry. It's been a long time. Yeah. And Manuel Santana. Santana. Mm -hmm. Welcome to both of you. Okay. Pleasure to have you on the show. Well, give us a little bit of background. Who are the Black Berets? Pues de, back in the uh, 60s, uh, Sal Candelaria, you know, the Chomo Candelaria, we call him that. He was one of the co-founders of the Black Parade for La Justicia. And before you know it, uh, it inspired a lot of us because it, w it had to do with social justice. It had to do with inspiring, you know, uh, pride and being able to, to express ourselves, who we are, and at the same time, take on the issues that were affecting us. Mm -hmm. So the Black Parade started doing that. You know, started a teen club, but then later on it changes. We started seeing that uh, viral warfare, we started seeing the drugs, we started seeing a lot of things that were going on. But uh, the Black Parades, you know, got a bad reputation, especially from law enforcement, because they felt that we were using we were a militant group, you know. Uh, we trained, but we didn't start trouble, you know. We, we didn't believe, we believed that, that that was a way to deal with fighting the injustices that was going on in the community. So was it uh, for the purpose of security, or what was the purpose originally of the organization? Protection? What well, was yeah, it? I think some of the, if the events, you know, mm -hmm. that were going on, culture events, you know, they would, they would ask us to pull security. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly what we would do. We pull security. Uh, there was a lot of difference of being able to communicate with the people about keeping the peace, about communications. You know, and that was our main intention, is to be able to form communications as well as creating awareness of whatever the issue was, no matter discrimination, you know, the police brutality, you know, those were one of the hot issues that was going on, you know, trying to get Raza into school, you know, in mm -hmm. college, you know. And then, of course, any of the issues that came up at that time with the Vietnam War, you know, mm -hmm. we got against that, you know, we got against, uh, uh, especially things that were oppressing us, things that were dividing us. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, after that, it was like to, that started changing is, it was the, the issue behind the militancy. Mm -hmm. But what was most important is that we believed in the cultura cura, culture cures. How do you know where you're going unless you know where you come from? So we started getting into trying to encourage those that knew more about the cultura, the culture. What attracted us the most is the indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, that's, that's what really inspired us, you know. Uh, and many people encouraged, like Cesar, uh, you know, Chavez was one that used to believe in a native, uh, Corky Gonzalez, mm -hmm. Crusade for Justice was another one, you know, Arjen Gutierrez, you know, that fought for the bilingual programs, you know, and Tejerina, fighting for the mm -hmm. land. But a lot of it based on indigenous movements, you know, until we started hooking up with American Indian movement, you know, with, uh, because a lot of us were mixed bloods, you know, mm -hmm. uh, our rasa were mixed with other tribes, so our involvement started getting connecting with, with, uh, with Dennis Banks or some means, and they kind of influenced us into more, especially at DQ University. Ah, that's that was a. Uh, because Raza and Chicanos were at a, a connection of trying to to educate our people about it, not just talk about it, you know, because to me, cultura isn't just the idea of the dance. Cultura isn't just the idea of the playing instrument. Cultura is a way of life. Mm -hmm. It's a way in connecting us with each other, connecting us to Mother Earth, you know, and touching more about who we are. So that's in, and that's where mm -hmm. the parade started getting more, more uh, I think, more solid, 
because a lot of them, like I said, were mixed bloods. Right, know, right. So. Now, how did you impact body of warfare? You, you mentioned well, that earlier. Well, I just did. You know, body of warfare couldn't just be deal by uh, solutions by getting how do you impact? Party. How do you impact the kids? How do you bring them in? How do you get them involved? How okay. do you, re you <coughs> recruit them? Okay. The triata was one of them, okay? That, that, the arts was one of the things. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to, able to create certain artwork, mm -hmm. you know, such, such as, uh, you know, Maclesh, you know, the, the, the whole symbols, mm -hmm. symbols, because they were into the art. They were mm -hmm. into, into art. That, that really inspired us. And so so that, that created uh, an interest among them. Like I said, La Musica, you know, is another one. You know, the, the thing that attracted the young people is that they felt that, they felt good about themselves. They felt good, you know, that they, they made a good feeling. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what, what I think that, that a lot of people felt that, that what is, what is a Chicano? Yes, what does it mean? What did it mean to be Chicano? And that was geared towards the indigenous mm -hmm. connection. Not just, we're not just Mexicans. Yes, Mexicans had a tendency of taking us away because there was so much division among our people that the indigenous part is what connects us to be tighter to the, not only the environment, but to others, and the arts, and the musica, you know. Mm -hmm. When they started getting into more traditional ceremonies that, you know, the mariachis and the florico, that was not the only part. Mm -hmm. No, man, it was things like the sun dance. Mm -hmm. It was things like, like you know, uh, ceremonies that Especially the danza, the danzantes, I think it's what really attracted a lot of young people because of the different kinds of dress, the mm -hmm. different kinds of, the colors were sacred, yes? Because that's one of the things that happened in gang warfare, is that they started using colors right. as a symbol of, of division. No, that it is, the Mayan colors is red and blue, yes? And what we're trying to do is to be able to say, especially the danzantes, use a lot of the, that all colors are sacred. So many triato groups, many danzantes started started being part of that. As a matter of right. fact, my friend, Manny, you know, he, he, they're into danzante. Yes? That oh, you're about. a dancer. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of funny that he's talking about, or you're talking about getting the young people involved, mm -hmm. because in a lot of ways, the things that the Black Berets were doing in their heyday affected me. I was born in 1983, and I was raised... Um, right there in Sal Si Puedes um, on uh, San Antonio and Sunset uh -huh. by Guadalupe Church. And going to those schools, you know, uh, Mayfair, Mayfair um, Elementary, which turned into Cesar Chavez. Right. And then going to Matson, you always heard, you know, Chicano, Chicano this, Chicano that. So even though um, it was, you know, just a more traditional school, like um, regular society, you still heard it from the teachers, you know. So you grew up with this kind of um, curiosity about what is a Chicano, you know, who am I, um, who are these people, you know, and um, danza was there and the murals were there and just growing up in East San Jose, mm -hmm. you know that there's a spirit there, you know, even if you don't know the names or the history, you grow up knowing, you know, about the murals and things that happened. So you start asking questions and that directly affected me because Matson, you know, I, a lot of people know, um, is very much like the epicenter of a lot of gang stuff. It's always been like that. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that someone was doing that in their day, showing people that there's another way, it reverberated to my time. Yeah. You know, and in a way I kind of feel like um, I was born to be a Black Beret before I even knew what it was. Because everything that they stand for and stood for kind of became things that became important to me, you know. Uh, being a young person right now, I'm 29, and and basically I, I'm finding out that people that were in the Black Berets affected me without knowing, and they didn't even know that their actions were going to affect me, and it's kind of like full circle, mm -hmm. you know. I'm a recent member of um, the, these Black Berets that they're trying to, you know, bring back. And what attracted you to it? Well, um, the family aspect, because mm -hmm. I'm a family man. I have a little boy coming, and I have a two-year-old little girl, and um, I've been getting involved in ceremony, you know, sweat lodge and danza and things like that. So it, it kind of just fit. So even though they asked me, um, you know, years later, um, as I'm kind of older, 
it still was kind of like a fit. You know, they didn't have to indoctrinate me into anything. They didn't have to explain anything to me. We already know, mm -hmm. you know. It's like that spirit is there. That spirit of East San Jose was always there. And it kind of, you know, it was like my father, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And tell me about the spiritual walk. You know, what? when you see, talk about the issues, you know, we always say political things may bring us together, but it's the spiritual things that keep mm -hmm. us together. So uh, we were influenced when they first started talking about uh, the walks. I mean, we had the walks with Cesar Chavez, with farm workers. We had the different walks. But the spiritual part, Cesar was the one that connected to spirituality. But we got into uh, how do we deal with social justice? How do we deal with spirituality when sometimes we're, we're kind of mad about what the issues that we're talking about? Like, for instance, what influenced us also was, if you see this banner back here, mm -hmm. this banner was uh, it's symbols that we saw on the longest walk. Back in 78, when they were trying to abrogate all the Indian treaties, you know, uh, we, uh, Dennis Banks and the Movement and many other groups became supporters for the longest walk. They wanted, so we walked from, San Francisco, from Sacramento, Sacramento to Washington, D.C. We took different symbols with us that were sacred to us, the sacred peace pipe, you know. And if you notice, there's sim symbols up there because one representing the indigenous from the south and one representing the indigenous from the north. Yes, so what kept that handshake? What kept that unity? You know, like I said, political things get together, but it's the spiritual symbols that identify, no matter the sacred peace pipe, the symbols of the peyote the Native American church, the symbols of Christianity, the symbols of, uh, of La Donatine, the Mother Earth, the Virgin. And those symbols are the different beliefs because that's what kept that handshake. That's what kept that unity. We approached uh, Adrian Vargas from Tarto de la Gente, and, and there was a young guy named Danny de los Reyes. Daniel de los Reyes was an artist there, you know, muralist. And we asked him about these different symbols. We were going to have the first Chicano spiritual walk from the east side to the west side, you know. And that's when the third issue of gang started coming out. They gave out of this and out of this. So <coughs> Danny did this for us. <coughs> so we walk from the east side of uh, uh, McKee, and matter of fact, not too far from here, mm -hmm. McKee and Keene. And, uh, and we came through, through all the way down until we got to uh, uh, Gardner area, you know. And there, there, you know, it was 10 miles. 500 Raza came together, and not one fight broke out. Like, nobody wanted to break the truth. Nobody wanted to be the first mm -hmm. one to violate the truth, because we asked it to be ceasefire, truth, yes? So 500 of them got together there at the Connor Center, yes, uh, the park down there, and, and it was beautiful. We realized that this symbol is powerfully used also for social justice. Not only what the farm workers did with this symbol, you know, regardless if you're Catholic or not, it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with this symbol identifying with indigenism. That's the key. And throughout historically, it has been. Since mm -hmm. all the way from Hidalgo, Zapata, Cesar Chavez have used this symbol. They thought, why can't I really use it? So we did. And, and that symbol became powerful. The influence came to us from my brother Jesse Dominguez. When he seen that we went on the longest walk in 78, he said, Carnal, we need something for us here. And all kinds of arras are forming. So that's when we walked from the east side to the west side, and, and uh, this banner was made. From then on, it became where different symbols that identify with who we are became the important part of our movement. We felt that black parades uh, uh, was giving us strength mm -hmm. you know, to each other and felt the importance of, of getting along with each other because it, there's a lot of differences. You come from different barrios. And the Black Parades went just for one barrio. They were scattered out. So that had to be important for us. The, the, these symbols that we carry, the staff, this one here went all the way to Washington, D.C. And we also walked all the way to Mexico City with it. Yes? Thank you. And different people put on different symbols of their beliefs. Uh -huh. You know? So we took this, we took this all the way to, to Mexico in 81. This, it was August 7th. Uh, 1981 to December 7th. Four months it took us to get to 
from San Jose to Mexico City. Wow. The, then in, in 80, we walked to, from San Jose to, to LA. And that was, that was uh, from August 7th to August 29th, a 10 year commemoration of Chicano Moratorium. Because historically, that was a very important time. As a matter of fact, that was the first time I seen so much raza come together. Thousands mm -hmm. of them. I never seen anything so inspiring with the Black Parade, the Brown Parades, Chicanos from all different, you know, uh, became part of, part of this, these walks, this commemoration. And we felt after 10 years, let's do it again. So do you have I, another walk coming up then in yes, August? Yes, we do. On, uh, on August 25th, 25th, we're going to be walking from La Raza Park. La Raza Park also has a history, story behind, behind unity, behind cultura. You know, we didn't have a park for La Raza. We didn't have a, a park that could identify with it. You know, the wine gardens, we had the different kinds of uh, parks, but not for La Raza. So that's when we walk from Story and King, the boulevard, you know, that brings the lowriders down to walk all the way to, to uh, La Raza Park. And that <coughs> is by Hallier Park? Yes, that's uh -huh. right by Coyote right Park. Yeah. Right, right. And, and right there, we had teatro, we had musica, we had different speakers. As a matter of fact, Dennis Banks came to that one. Uh, 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 Herman Vaca from the Comedian Chicano Rights from San Diego. He was there. Many others have been involved in the movimiento. Sometimes it's hard to remember everybody because there's so <laughs> many that wanted to make a difference, yes? Because historically, that's, that's what it took. And so now we want to do the same. We want to inspire, just like a young man, it is to inspire that. Now it's their turn. It's their turn. You know, you know, they got, got to pass it on now. You know, they, they got to go and more ahead. They more energy. Yeah, they got more energy. I got to get, I got to. Carry a staff for real, yes? Uh, but it feels good. I feel so inspired with the young parades that, 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 are, that are, some are going to school, some are going, you know, uh, all walks of life and make a difference. Now. And we do, we do need to make a difference, you know? That's right. And uh, the young people need to stand up and say, oh, yeah, last time. So just like we did back in 79, was that one that we did here, you know, here's a picture of one of them. And it, and it showed the, 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 the young Let guys, hold that for you, you know, uh, inspired to, to, to take this on. Now, we got to come out with new new different pictures. So that's where they start to say, what's going on right now? What's happening now? Uh, Roddy, what's, what's going on? I mean, there's too many violence out there. There's too much. Quite a bit. Yes. And that hurts. That hurts a lot. That's what keeps us, I mean, so many Rasa, yeah, we, we and right now it's communications, comunicación. Cultura cura. Cultura cura. Como sabes dónde vas y no sabes de dónde vienes. And I believe strongly that, that that's involved every type of nationality or race is out there dealing with, with this problem. Cultura is the key because that's the spirituality. Right. That's the spirituality. Because don't need to see that because that is how our people in the past, there were those that were or that they try to make a difference. Now, now it's another generation. They got to make that difference. And we, we feel that, that since the moratorium was in August, a lot of movements were done. So this August 25th, we're going to march. They're from, from the, uh, the Raza Park, where they've been a struggle to try to make it a, a, a park of peace. That's why it's called La Raza de Paz. You know, and then march to, to uh, Capitol, and, uh, and all the way down to uh, McLaughlin, yeah, up m we're going to go on McLaughlin. Uh, well, uh, we're going to go from Russa Park okay. to um, Capitol on McLaughlin to uh, So how are you going to go from the, uh, the park? So um, uh, I think that we're going to a back road meet there? up. We're going to meet up at the park, and we're going to have a sunrise ceremony to, you know, just start it off right, get everybody cleansed mm -hmm. and, and just mentally ready for it. And then um, we're going to drive over to Capitol McLaughlin. Oh, okay. So from there, we're going to begin our walk, which is actually a straight line all the way down um, till we get to Roosevelt, which is in East Santa Clara Street. Yeah. That goes straight through? Huh? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay. McLaughlin uh, all the way down, yeah. Uh-huh. And um, 
Are you welcoming the community co yes. to come out yes. to the event? Yes, we are. Okay. You know, uh, Roosevelt has a history of the end, of mm -hmm. a lot of involvement. It sure does. <laughs> Roosevelt, I remember the walkouts uh, during the, you know, when the junior high school there, they walked out, you know, because they wanted to make <coughs> a difference in the education, you know. And, uh, high school, we had the highest dropout, guys, you know, at that time, you know, and, and I feel that Roosevelt had historically, it should, it should be inspired by different people that came out and trying to make that difference. You know, it's, uh, now all around there, we just had a Machica New Year down there. It's beautiful. Wasn't it beautiful? I, oh, I was there. Man, I was so inspired with them. That was nice. That was nice. I see all those danzantes, man. I, I wanted to get out there and dance. I forgot <laughs> all about my arthritis. Well, you that's know, good. That's, that's what it's supposed you know? to do. You know, it felt good, you know. And I think that energy, that feeling, it will help to inspire. Because everybody has gifts. Yeah. Everybody has different gifts. And there's a way to get a chance to, to bring them out, to come out and do it. You know, education it comes from different levels, not just the universities. You know, and, and we feel that, that we need to do that now. You know, so what kind of help do you need? What do you need the community to, to help you with? Or how can they help you? <coughs> well, we're inviting people from all walks of life, um, all backgrounds, you know, um, Asian backgrounds, Mexican, all because um, East San Jose has changed a lot. Yes, you I know. know it's, yeah. There's a lot of Filipinos, there's a lot of Vietnamese now. And San Jose people know that all our cultures mix, you know. You know, what's your favorite restaurant? I like to go to pho, I like to go here. But we never really talk to each other. We're never really involved in each other's lives. So we want to bring people together in a, spirit, in a spiritual way. Um, so we need bodies. We need as many people just there because that's what makes a difference, to show people that there is a different way, you know? Just like when they were there, somehow they affected my life. So us doing these ceremonies, mm -hmm. these sacred, you know, four direction ceremonies, um, just makes a difference. So the, the first thing we need is people coming and showing up to show everyone else that there's a different path, mm -hmm. a different way of life, and that we can have unity amongst different kinds of people and still, you know, still do something just to show that we want peace. That's the first thing. The second thing that we need is we need to spread the word for it. And we need, um, we need, you know, don donations like water. Um, fruit. Fruit, items. yeah, definitely fruit, things like that. Uh, when we're gonna end up at Roosevelt Park, we're gonna have a little, um, like a closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have people speak and people share their thoughts on, you know, gang warfare and things that, mm -hmm. how it affected them. So if people have their stories, you know, everybody's affected by gang violence. So if they have their stories, come down and talk about it, you know. Everybody's touched by the violence, regardless of where they come That's from. That's true, that's yeah. true, and it does affect the entire community. Why I would encourage people to come out. At the end of the show, we're gonna show clips of, or uh, pictures of different events that you've been at. I know you were recently at a Leonard Peltier fundraiser, and you've done a lot of the Mexica New Year's, a lot of events throughout the community. I know you went to uh, Sal's uh, funeral. Mm -hmm in uh, Arizona and so we have pictures little a few pictures that were given by one of your members that we're going to show it as we close out the uh, the show but uh, let's encourage people to come out I want to thank you for all the work you've done in the community over the years especially you Enrique you've been so involved I've known you for a long time and still at it so that's very good to see what, what message would you leave our youth with you do you do for the love of your people and not the hate of your enemies what you do because we do have to care for one another you know we're not always going to agree with them, but there has to be that effort there have to be that different feeling that with one another and respect people for whatever beliefs they have you know there's another thing too you got we have to learn to do that I hope to be a day we can recruit more members you know the black Beret by justicia is a it's more of a concept they're just an organization, a group. It's a concept, concept, yes? And that concept is based upon quinceamos and how we're gonna make that changes. That's a different kind of courage. It takes more courage to struggle for nonviolence, you know, than just 
I believe that that's that's the key. That's the message I would give, you know. And young people today can make the difference, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we need. We hope to recruit more blackberries for La Justicia and, and to work with others, you know, and take this message out. Yeah. Great. And, um, uh, and also another important message is on right. Facebook. You can find us, uh, just put the Spiritual Peace Walk and it'll pop up. I want to thank you both for joining us today. And I want to thank you, the audience, for being here with us. Please help with, in any way you can. If you can come out to the walk, if you can donate water, if you can donate something to help out. And thanks for watching Native Voice TV. Like us on Facebook. Good night. Mm -hmm.